The DM32UV is the latest DMR-enabled radio from Baofeng. I got my hands on one and took it for a spin, and you're about to find out why I think it is the best DMR radio for beginners, with a few caveats. That's coming right up. Welcome back to the channel. It's great to have you here. Banggood.com contacted me a while back and asked if they could send me a Baofeng DM32UV in exchange for my honest opinion. I got into DMR several years ago, but my activity in that mode had dropped off, but I figured, what the heck, yeah, I'll take a look at it. So here it is, the DM32 UV in what I'll call flat dark earth. I went with this color because I liked it better than the green or black ones I've seen, but it does come in three colors. The DM32 UV is advertised as an 8 watt dual band DMR enabled ham radio. The design of the HT looks to be inspired by the Motorola APX7000. Now the APX7000 and several other Motorola radios also has its speaker mounted on the opposite side that the display is on. That bothers some people, but not me. However, the Motorola has a microphone on the speaker side and a display on the top, which makes its orientation less problematic than the DM32 UV. But while it's a little odd, I didn't really mind it as much while using it. And if you're using it in a nice holster, I like to flip it around to protect the screen like so. Speaking of holsters, the DM32 UV comes packed with one. Mine was a cloth type, but I have seen hard plastic shell types. Also included with the radio are a pretty decent rubber duck antenna, a battery that is held in via screw on the bottom, which secures it extremely well, but makes battery swapping more of a challenge. A cradle charger, a USB-C cable, and mine came with a European plug, so I was sent an adapter for use in the United States. Honestly, that seemed a bit sketchy, but it was a moot point because I never intended on using the included cradle charger anyway, since the battery can be charged conveniently on the back with a USB-C cable, and that's how I prefer to charge all my radios. Now this is an analog and DMR radio, meaning it handles regular amateur radio analog transmissions on 70 centimeter UHF and 2 meter VHF, and can also take advantage of the DMR digital mode, which is fairly popular due to the low cost of entry and amount of radios available, unlike Yaesu System Fusion, which requires a Yaesu radio, or D-Star, which requires a Kenwood, ICOM, or Flex radio all of which are pretty pricey, especially when compared to their DMR counterparts. Now, right out of the gate, I will tell you that DMR is a little clunky to get set up. It's not impossible by any means, but it can be a little challenging if you're not tech savvy, or sometimes even if you are. Now, from what I understand, it was somewhat designed around a commercial radio idea, but was then modified for use by radio amateurs, which explains some of its complexities. You can use a DMR radio with a hotspot that you either buy or make yourself from a Raspberry Pi, or if you have a repeater in your area that hosts DMR, you can go that route. I would suggest that you look up something like Repeater Book to see what's in your area. Now, I won't get into all the details of DMR because we would be here all day, but it's more involved than the programming you would typically do in Chirp. That brings up my next point. To use this radio, you must use the CPS that Baofeng provides to program the radio, though you can do some programming with the front panel, and that's actually not too bad. But really, the majority of your programming will be in the Baofeng CPS, and that's because this radio is not supported by any other software, including Chirp, RT Systems, or OpenGD77. From what I understand, it has something to do with Baofeng's firmware being difficult to crack to figure out how to get the software to write to the radio's memory. That's probably oversimplified, but that's the gist of it. RT Systems flat out said they wouldn't support it. The same for OpenGD77, and Chirp doesn't support DMR radios because Chirp is for analog radios for the most part, but it does support the Yaesu FT70D to some degree, which is digital, but not DMR. That being said, the provided CPS is really not that bad. I spent about an hour or so adding a few digital and analog channels to my radio and got everything working. Now, to be fair, I've set up DMR radios before, but this was not the worst CPS I've used. 
not by a long shot. That title goes to the horrible TYT CPS software, which was an absolute nightmare to get working correctly from install to radio upload. I punished myself with three radios using that CPS until I discovered OpenGD 77. OpenGD 77 is probably the easiest to use, which is what most of my radios run. But again, the Baofeng software really isn't bad. If you run into problems, the popularity of the DM32UV has led to lots of instructional videos and how-tos being posted to YouTube. So you have lots of material you can refer to if you get stuck. That was not the case for me with my TYT radios, which is the first major reason I will say that the Baofeng DM32UV is the absolute best radio for anyone just getting into DMR. There has been so much content created around this radio that I'm willing to bet that you can find the answer to most any problem with an internet search, especially on YouTube. In fact, let me give you one now. When I first got this radio, I was testing its spectral purity and power output, as I do. I noticed that the power output was fluctuating by one or two, sometimes three watts. And when I attached it to my tiny SA Ultra, I saw the same thing. Took a little video with my phone to document it for support. It's all over the place. And, and when I hooked it up to the power meter, I saw the same thing. It was going between like 3.6 to 4.5. I hadn't heard anything in a while and I get impatient, but I knew that firmware updates had been available for the DM32 UV. So I grabbed the latest one and applied it. Problem solved. So that's my tip to you if you buy one. Update the firmware to the latest version. I don't always advise that, but in this case, I will. The DM32UV offers more than just analog and digital transmit and receive. It is fully capable of receiving airband transmissions. I tested it on a Slim Jim J-Pole I have mounted in my attic, using it to tune my local airport's ATIS. It performed as well on the airband as the TID Radio TDH3 and even my Yaesu FTM300D. And I'm still bitter about Yaesu discontinuing that radio. Leave a comment if you are too. Also, it has a very capable and accurate GPS receiver that was able to get my location in moments. It can also be turned off to save battery power. This can be used to share your location via APRS or just track it. There is a YouTube video out there on how to get this set up, so we won't get into that here. The two side keys and front P1 and P2 keys are customizable for many different functions, including VFO channel mode, FM radio, scan, transmit power, and more, including the short and long press of each button. In fact, I switched over to VFO mode and found out that the radio is completely unlocked for Mars cap transmissions. And that's my second reason for naming this the best radio for anyone just getting into DMR. The amount of features packed into it for the price are quite impressive. The prior Baofeng DMR enabled radio, the DM1701, did not offer nearly as many features and is very close in price to the DM32 UV. So if you're going to buy one to start out, the DM32 just makes sense. Looking at the menu system, I found it very easy to navigate to find what I was looking for. If you've used the BF F8HP Pro or the UV25 Big Chungus, you'll find a familiar layout. They're not exactly the same, but close enough. Programming or changing channel parameters was simple, no complaints from me. And that's reason number three of why I think the DM32UV is the best beginner DMR radio, an easy to use familiar menu system. Now spectral purity and power output are important and many of you may have jumped to this point in the video. So welcome aboard, great to have you along. Testing high power output on the VHF calling frequency, the DM32UV actually surpasses its advertised 8 watts of output at about 8.5 watts. Heading over to the UHF side, it outputs about 7.5 watts. 
Hooking it up to the Tiny SA Ultra, we run a standard harmonic test using the VHF calling frequency of 146.52 MHz with 40 dB of attenuation in line prior to the signal entering the Tiny SA. This negative 40 dB has been entered into the level menu and a blue line has been drawn at the bottom of the screen at 16.02 dB, which translates to 25 microwatts. Any spurious emissions must be at least 40 dB below our fundamental frequency of 146.52 and less than 20 microwatts in power. So let's take a look. As you can see, the DM32 UV is exceptionally clean and no power fluctuations like I saw before I updated the firmware. I am really impressed by this radio, and that's my fourth reason why I think the DM32 UV is the best DMR radio for beginners. Clean signal and power output that matches and actually exceeds advertised specs. You don't often see that with radios in this price range. And finally, let's do a little signal check by using a call to Parrot on the Brandmeister network. Parrot is like a testing channel on DMR that will repeat whatever you say back to you a moment after you transmit. So it's great for tests like this. This lets you know what transmit and receive sound like. This is Whiskey 3 Mike Bravo Tango doing a radio check on Parrot. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy brown dog. Whiskey 3 Mike Bravo Tango, I'll be clear. This is Whiskey 3 Mike Bravo Tango doing a radio check on Parrot. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy brown dog. Whiskey 3 Mike Bravo Tango, I'll be clear. Sound quality is excellent. I also asked around and received positive signal reports from other hams on both digital and analog. One small quirk I noticed was that the output volume of the DM32 is relatively low on the digital side. However, this is easily remedied by going to the Digimic gain in the menu and setting it to enhance two or three. There's another tip for you. Either one seems to get the audio where it needs to be. The analog side needed no adjustment from what I was told after checking into a local repeater. And that gets us to price. Typically, it can be a bit challenging to get a good DMR radio for under $100. And in my opinion, the DM32 UV is not just a good DMR radio. It's a great DMR radio, especially for beginners. With the only limitation that I see being the battery that isn't swapped as easily as clip-in batteries and the exclusive CPS software. That said, the DM32 UV clocks in well under $100, and that is my fifth and final reason that I call it the best DMR radio for beginners. The cost of entry is so low that if you do go through the process of getting into DMR and you get your DMR ID and all that stuff, you set up a hotspot, and you find you don't like it, you haven't wasted a bunch of money figuring that out. And at worst, you have a very good analog radio that you can use going forward. In fact, banggood.com is having their 1111 sale right now where you can get a killer deal on these radios, including the flat dark earth one, which is usually a little more expensive. Also, use the code in my video description to get even more off of your order, and these all qualify for free shipping. I hope you enjoyed the video and review. I know I did, and I walked away thoroughly impressed with this radio, and that is not always the case. The last two reviews I did, I said don't do them. They're no good. Don't believe me? Check them out. As always, respectful questions and comments are welcomed, even if we disagree. I'm Matt, and remember, when it comes to tech, I've got you covered.